hydrogen, helium, and lithium in the universe. Secular astronomers have tweaked the Big Bang model to a point where it can supposedly account for these elements in the same concentrations that we see today. As for the close match between the Big Bang model and the observed abundance of light elements, this too isn't as impressive as cosmologists claim. First of all, this wasn't a prediction made ahead of time. The abundances were already known when the Big Bang model was being developed, so the model was just tweaked to match them. Second, it also turns out that even after this tweaking, there are still some discrepancies between the predictions and the actual observations. And third, just like redshifts, the abundances are consistent with other cosmologies besides the Big Bang anyway, so light element abundances aren't very persuasive evidence for the Big Bang model after all. There are indications that there might be some stuff in the universe that we can't see. For example, many galaxy clusters don't appear to have enough mass to hold themselves together gravitationally. When this was first discovered, astronomers called it the missing mass problem. Another example is seen within individual galaxies, where stars move around as they orbit the galaxy's center of mass. However, in many galaxies, the outer stars are moving too quickly for the galaxies to hold themselves together over long time scales. Again, it was proposed that there's a lot of missing mass somewhere to hold them together. Most astronomers today believe that these observations indicate that there is actually mass there to hold these structures together. They believe that this mass isn't really missing because it's there, it's just that we can't see it. But if these observations were actually caused by mass that we can't see, how much of it would there be? A lot. Almost six times as much as the visible mass. For every galaxy you see, there would be almost six galaxies worth of stuff that you don't see. In other words, only 15% of all the physical stuff in the universe would be visible to us. The other 85% would be invisible. This invisible mass has been named cold dark matter. Matter because it's physical stuff, cold because it's moving at slow speeds, and dark because it's invisible. Now when I say it's invisible, I'm not saying we can't detect it because it's too small or too dark to see. No, it's invisible in its very essence. It emits no visible light, no x-rays, no radio waves, nothing. Nor does it absorb any light or reflect any light. In fact, it doesn't interact with light at all. That's why it's invisible, because light and all other forms of radiation would pass completely through it. This is only one possible explanation though. There are several other explanations, some of which don't even require there to be any missing mass at all. They account for the observations in other ways. But most secular astronomers reject all these other possibilities. Why? Because they don't fit the Big Bang model. So, because most secular astronomers believe in the Big Bang, they must believe that the missing mass is made up of cold dark matter, an exotic new form of matter that's not made up of atoms, but some other particles that are invisible. Matter like this would be outside of known physics. That's why you'll see astronomers frequently make comments like this one. What exactly is it? What is it made from? Well, the simple answer is, we don't know. No known particle fits the description. And as a Princeton cosmologist has commented, it's an embarrassment that the dominant forms of matter in the universe are hypothetical. Even though there are no good theoretical candidates for dark matter particles, many physicists have been looking for them anyway. So far, the searches have been unsuccessful. But let's say that someday, researchers actually found a new particle that meets this description. Would that support the Big Bang model and discredit the creation model? No, it wouldn't. If new forms of matter were found, the current Big Bang model would need to be modified to account for them. If cold dark matter were discovered, and if it turned out to be the explanation for the missing mass, this wouldn't be a triumph for the Big Bang model. Instead, it would require yet another modification of the Big Bang model. Yet another bandage slapped onto a theory that has already accumulated a pile of them. Remember, the Big Bang was supposed to have created all the matter in the universe, and this would include dark matter, if it exists. However, the current Big Bang model was set up to explain only normal matter. It has no explanation for this mysterious stuff that's supposed to make up 85% of the mass of the universe. As one astrophysicist explained, Really, we have no idea what's causing it. We so don't know what's causing it that we shouldn't even call it dark matter, because that implies we have some understanding that it's matter. We don't know what it is. I could call it Fred. 85% of all the gravity in the universe comes from something about which we know nothing. So if your theory of everything only attempts to explain 4 or 5% of everything, do you really have a theory of everything? I think the answer is clear. 
Even many secular scientists are unhappy with the situation. As one astrophysicist has complained, it really is strange, and to our perhaps uneducated eyes, arbitrary, ugly, or accidental. To live in a universe where only 4% of matter is ordinary matter, I find awkward at best, implausible at the least, but there it is. If I didn't have all these facts in front of me, and you came up with a universe like that, I'd either ask what you've been smoking, or tell you to stop telling fairy tales. What would be one argument for, let's say, uh, God's existence that you find uh, particularly uh, powerful? I believe in uh, that arguments stack up, that they're cumulative, that as for any scientific theory, a bit of evidence makes it marginally probable, a bit more evidence makes it half a significant degree of probability, a bit more evidence makes it more probable than not, and so on. So they stack up. But uh, uh, my starting point and uh, one of the most powerful arguments is the argument from the orderliness of the universe. Uh, what I mean by that is that every particle of matter, every atom, uh, is governed by exactly the same scientific laws. Well, what that means, if we just take one example of Newton's law of gravity, it's not quite accurate, we know now, but the, the basic point remains. Uh, every particle of matter in the universe attracts every other particle of matter with a force proportional to its mass multiplied by that of the other particle divided by the square of their distance apart. And that applies to every atom everywhere in the universe. Now, that's a very strong, and there are similar generalizations um, in respect of uh, the three other forces which, which govern the interaction of material objects. Um, now, it's a very striking thing that everything should behave in the same matter. The universe way. The universe were thrown up by chance. You'd expect some things to behave one way, some things to behave a different way. Some things to behave one way one day, different way the next. But they all always behave in the same way. Now, why is that?